Hey, what's up? It's Jared with Ditch Auto, and today we're gonna take a look at the top five settings that I change on my GoPro Hero 5. Uh, this camera's great, it's got a touchscreen on the back, it's a new design, it's pretty much waterproof without adding anything on it. Uh, it's, it's been a great upgrade so far. I've really enjoyed using the camera. I recently uploaded a video that is kind of a walkthrough. I talk a lot about the different settings and menus and all that stuff about the camera. So if you want a general walkthrough of the camera first, go check out that video and then come back to this one. So this is the top five settings that I change. And this is a common video that I do because cameras by default do not come en uh, enabled for people who wanna get like great, who want control out of their camera and wanna get the best photo or image that they can get out of the camera. They come set up so that the average person can turn it on and take a decent picture or shoot a decent video. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you want something that is above standard or above average, then you need to go and customize it a little bit. And that's what this video is gonna be all about. So I'm gonna go ahead and power on my camera, press and hold that mode button for a second, and it's gonna power my camera up. The first thing I do, and this is video mode because I mainly use GoPros for video. I have photography cameras, and so I don't use my GoPro for photography that much. I do use it for time-lapsing a lot, but not so much for photos. So we're gonna, some of these settings are gonna lean more towards video modes, and then I, I may come back and actually just do a whole nother video on photo mode. But anyways, let's tap on this uh, bottom left-hand icon here. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure our camera is in video mode, and then we're gonna set the resolution to 2.7K. Now, the reason that I set the resolution to 2.7K is so that I can enable uh, image stabilization. It's so I have a higher frame rate that I can choose. I'm not needing 4K because I'm not really uploading everything in 4K yet. 4K is coming. Some people have 4K TVs. Some people have 4K displays on their smartphones. But right now, I just don't need to be producing content in 4K. The reason that I choose 2.7K is because image stabilization isn't perfect inside of this camera. Image stabilization is okay, but a lot of times we get shaky footage out of our GoPros. And the only way to fix that is to take our footage out of the GoPro, put it in some sort of software like Final Cut Pro X on the Mac or Adobe Premiere Pro on the Mac or the PC, and then stabilize that footage. Final Cut Pro X makes it really easy to stabilize footage because you just click on the clip in the, uh, um, I don't know what it's called, the window on the top right, the screen, you're able to choose stabilization and it goes through and stabilizes the footage. But if you start out, if you're gonna put like a 1080p HD video out there, that's what you wanna upload and you shoot that in 1080p, you don't have any extra screen real estate uh, or any extra data to stabilize. So it's actually going to shrink your video down a little bit and stabilize it. And then you're gonna to have to oversample your video a little bit, which is actually gonna degrade quality. So if we start at 2.7K, that gives us a whole bunch of extra real estate to stabilize. And I do that not because I always need to stabilize my footage, it's just so that when I do need to stabilize my footage, I have extra data there to work with. And it saved my butt several times. So I highly recommend that you, uh, that you set your camera to 2.7K. It's just a, a great option. Um, now, if, if all you're ever doing is shooting video and then transferring it to your phone, um, sometimes it's much easier just to shoot at 1080, but uh, you know, the GoPro's gotten really good at, um, even if you're shooting 4K, transferring that stuff over to your phone, which obviously is gonna take more time because it's a bigger file, uh, but you still can do that. So keep in mind that if you shoot video on the GoPro, transfer it immediately to your phone, the 2.7K is gonna be a bigger file size and it will take a little bit more time to transfer than if you were shooting at 1080. Now, while we're talking about resolution, I also always shoot at 60 frames per second. The reason I shoot at 60 frames per second is because a lot of times I am capturing something on my GoPro and I may want to slow it down a little bit, like slow-mo. And if you shoot at 60 frames per second, uh, the typical video that you're uploading is 30 frames per second, maybe even 24 frames per second, but usually 30 frames per second. That means you have double the frames to work with and you could stretch those out and make that slow-mo actually look good. If you shoot at 30 frames per second in your camera 
and you are editing a project at 30 frames per second, you don't have any room to slow down your footage. So I highly recommend that you shoot at 60 frames per second, especially if you uh, know that you're gonna be doing some slow motion. Um, now, if you really are gonna be doing some slow motion, like super slow motion, uh, like fast moving objects and you wanna slow them down quite a bit, you will need to go into maybe uh, like a 1080 uh, resolution and then you can go up to as high as 120 frames per second, which is double the amount of frames, if you've done the math, as 60 frames per second. Lots of room to, uh, to slow things down. Um, but I stay in 1080. Uh, well, I stay in 2.7K unless I really need to slow something down. Um, so that's gonna do it with that setting. Let's take a look at what I change next. Now, if you swipe over from the right-hand side, you're gonna get your camera settings. Now, this camera settings menu likes to reset itself quite often. Not all the settings reset, but some of them do. Anytime that you change the resolution, like I just did in the last step, the shutter speed always goes back to auto. It's super duper annoying. Now you can turn off ProTune, uh, you know, so turning off ProTune basically puts the camera in full auto and it doesn't give you any control, but we wanna have some control over our stuff. So if you toggle that on, uh, I would recommend setting your shutter speed to whatever that frame rate is that you set. So it's gonna give me a minimum, because I'm in 60, 60 frames per second, it's gonna give me a minimum shutter speed of 1 60th per second. Now, what will happen a lot of times with your GoPro camera is when you're outdoors on a bright day or something like that, um, and you have it set to auto, your camera is gonna go and you know maybe bump itself all the way up to 1 480th of a second or something like that. And what's happening there is that your shutter speed is adjusting to compensate for the how bright it is outside. If your camera jumps too high, like that, that uh, shutter speed jumps too high, then your footage is gonna start really looking edgy, kind of, it's hard to explain, but if you ever saw that Hobbit movie, the most recent one, that was actually filmed in a higher, uh, at a higher shutter speed, at a higher frame rate, um, it just is kind of crazy to watch. It feels surreal. It doesn't flow like a video. Um, it's, it definitely was a, a challenge to get past. I mean, it was just odd for me to watch. So a lot of times I typically shoot at 1 60th uh, with my shutter speed. Um, and especially if I'm in lower light situations, I will force the shutter speed because I want it to be the lowest number that I can get it at in, when shooting video. Um, the lower the number here, so 1 60th, the more light that's going to come in and hit the sensor because typically the shutter is staying open longer. If we decrease or decrease this number by increasing it to say 1 480th of a second, that's actually making the shutter go faster and what that's doing is letting less light in. Um, so you will need to set this because there isn't a way to add any way to block light that's coming in or to limit light that's coming in from uh, outside of the camera, um, or there isn't anything really that's that good, uh, you may need to make adjustments to this. But typically I am at 1 60th uh, with my shutter speed. And on any of these, you tap to confirm, and then it takes you back to the menu here. Uh, I also set my color to flat. That's gonna be our third thing that I change. I set my color to flat because if I do not, the only other option is GoPro. And while GoPro looks good in the back of the camera, essentially what it's doing is it is making your video much more contrasty uh, by kind of uh, crushing the whites and the darks, the highlights and the shadows, um, and kind of bringing them uh, further apart, and it's giving you less data to work with loud siren. So the problem with that is that if you are wanting to go and color correct your footage later in an app, um, whether it's an app on a phone or it's an app on your computer like Final Cut or Adobe Premiere Pro, the problem that you're going to run into is your footage isn't going to be as pliable as it used to because it's already had a lot of the details crushed in the highlights and the shadows. And so I shoot in flat because it's, it's almost never that I'm uploading something raw out of the camera. It's always going into some piece of software to be edited first. The only time that I go and choose the GoPro color uh, and, and you know some of these other settings is if um, I'm gonna be uploading it straight from the camera 
uh, to the internet and I just want the camera to do the work for me. Um, so that's one thing that I do change. Uh, as a side note to that, white balance, um, the footage, the bit rate of the footage that comes out of the GoPro isn't super deep. So there isn't as much room to, uh, to color correct later. So typically uh, white balance can change uh, based on your situation. And we have uh, basically color temperatures. Um, we have native and we've got some pretty large jumps in our color temperature or of course auto. 3000K, that is much cooler. So you typically would use that when you're indoors and you're underneath lights like I am right now. Uh, and you would typically would go a bit higher like 5500 when you're outside and you're trying to match the sun. However, depending on how bright the sun is versus how many clouds are in the sky and stuff like that, that can change the color temperature too. So where changing the color temperature away from auto white balance is pretty important is when you want consistency in the color of your footage, regardless of what's going on uh, in the environment that you're shooting. And also, if you wanna match the color temperature between other cameras, such as a DSLR or some other camera, you would wanna try and just set the color temperature to be the same across all of your cameras. It definitely gives you a more uniform look and you're gonna spend less time trying to match the camera's color later. So let's go back. I usually do not leave my white balance set to auto, um, but you know, I just went through that whole spiel, so let's just leave it at that. The other thing that I change, which uh, I'll just go ahead and throw in as an, as an extra uh, third item, is the ISO. These cameras have very small sensors, and when your ISO starts to jump, you know, up here, 6400, you know, 3200, 1600, your footage is going to get really noisy and kind of unusable. Uh, if you've ever seen GoPro footage at night or in the dark where it just looks grainy and it just looks horrible, that's because the camera is boosting that ISO as high as it can get and the camera sensor just can't handle it. So what I typically do is lock my ISO somewhere lower. Uh, like I never want my ISO to go above 800. Uh, if I'm outside, I can leave my ISO at 100 because it's super bright and I don't need the extra sensitivity. But if I'm indoors and I know the lighting situation is going to be dim, I will lock my ISO at a maximum of 800. So that way I know that I'm gonna have to figure out some other form of lighting because I would rather figure out some other form of lighting than have my camera footage end up being horrible. And whatever that means, if that means using a Lumi cube or a flashlight or you know, turning on some extra lamps or something like that, that's what you're gonna have to do because the sensors in these little cameras are so tiny that you have to bump the sensitivity to get more light in there and they can't handle the extra sensitivity so your footage ends up kind of looking horrible. So you have this little lock right here. As you can see, I can tap on lock and I can lock my ISO to 400 so that way the camera doesn't automatically mess with it. I find that to be uh, a super useful feature and it's a setting that I make sure is locked in this camera. So we have some other settings. Sharpness I set to low because I don't want the camera sharpening my footage. I wanna do that in post-production. I have the audio set to high because I want the camera to do as much of its processing as possible on the audio because the audio is gonna be bad anyways because it's coming in through a GoPro. If I want good audio, I will use some sort of external recording device and I will sync up my audio to the video in some sort of software. Um, and then you can also hit ProTune Reset. It's gonna reset all of these settings to default, which would be a bummer if you already had them set. So I recommend not touching that setting too much, if at all possible. Uh, let's swipe again, video stabilization. This would be set the fourth thing that I change. I do enable video stabilization. You obviously cannot enable video stabilization in 4K because the sensor can't create or can't capture any larger of an image than 4K, so there's no extra room for it to do its work. It is doing this all digitally, so it's using software to stabilize your footage, and with that said, there has to be extra video. So the largest uh, video that you can capture with stabilization is 2.7K. Another reason that I shoot in 2.7K instead of 4K is because 
That's the, low, the highest setting that I can get with internal camera stabilization. I have found the stabilization works really good in almost all situations except extreme vibration situations. Like when I mount this to uh, something that doesn't have suspension like a go-kart and I'm driving over something bumpy, it's best to have a extremely good mounting situation than it is to just use stabilization. Because if this is mounted to something that vibrates a lot, you're gonna see a uh, jello in your jello-y footage and all that stuff. It's better, uh, and the video stabilization, the software can't handle the high vibration that's going on. Uh, so the only time that I turn off the stabilization is in really high vibration situations. Otherwise, if I'm using it when I'm walking, if I have it mounted to a bicycle, um, to a chest mount or anything like that, the stabilization definitely makes for a better image. One more swipe, auto low light. Auto low light is something that definitely changes the ISO and the shutter speed and some of the other settings of your camera uh, when you enter into low light situations. So depending on what you're looking for, this auto low light can go and modify some of your settings. Um, I found that in situations I don't have any control over, this auto low light setting is better than nothing at all. If I turn off the auto low light setting, it's my responsibility to make sure that my environment is lit properly to get good video. Uh, and not all the time do we have that option. So auto low light, you can toggle it on or off right here. And then the, uh, the fifth and final setting that I make sure that I change is manual audio control. Now the, the audio, the microphone that's on this camera is not the best. It has to be water resistant. I mean, there's just, and GoPro audio has never been fantastic. So you have to do whatever you can to, you know, make sure you're getting the best audio. If your camera is mounted to you or mounted to something and there isn't a bunch of wind coming at it, then leave it set to stereo mode, which is what I put it on stereo only. I found that that is the best mode uh, for average everyday use. Now, when you would wanna switch it over to wind only is when you have uh, wind coming at your device. Maybe you're, um, you're on a bike and you're riding fast or you're on a motorcycle or you hang it out the window or something. If you don't turn on the wind only mode, uh, it could just capture a lot of that wind noise. You're leaving it up to the camera to decide. I like to tell the camera what to do. And because of that, I put it in stereo mode when I don't need you know things to move around that much. Um, and also when it's inside of the waterproof case, it doesn't really matter. The audio is gonna be horrible anyways. Um, or if uh, of course you are uh, in a high moving, high wind, or it's just a super windy day, go ahead and enable that option. And it will definitely, um, definitely save the limited audio that you're gonna get out of your camera. So the last and final setting that I'm gonna talk about, which is kind of a bonus, is what happens when you press down the shutter when your camera is powered off. Now, if you have noticed, the one of the features of this camera, and I'm just powering it off right now, is to simply press the button down on the shutter, the camera powers up, and then it starts recording or doing whatever you wanted it to do. Now, I'm gonna tap that button again. It's gonna save my image and power the whole camera down. This is super time-saving and it's a fantastic feature. However, you can customize how that works and I definitely do customize how that works for me. You wanna power up your camera, you wanna swipe down, go into preferences, and then scroll until you get to, scroll until you get to quick capture. Make sure quick capture is turned on and then choose the default mode that you want. Now, depending on uh, whether you're gonna use your camera more for video or photos or time-lapsing, you can choose the default mode that you want your camera to start up in when you enable quick capture, which is pressing that shutter button down once. I'm gonna leave mine in video because that's what I use it for mostly. Uh, and then lastly, I set my auto off to five minutes. I want my camera to shut off as soon as possible if I'm not using it. Uh, to save battery because the battery life on these little cameras is not as long as I'd like them to be. And swapping out batteries on these things is a pain, especially when you have the camera mounted somewhere. So that's gonna do it for my top five settings that I change on the GoPro. I, can, I could talk a lot about things that I change and I know those are pretty much all video related features. I will come back and do a top five photo settings 
uh, that I change on the GoPro because there are times that I use my GoPro for photos and some of those settings are slightly different, such as the photo resolution, um, the shutter speed when you take photos is gonna be different than when you shoot video, stuff like that. So make sure to subscribe to our channel here on Ditch Auto. This channel is all about learning how to get the most out of your cameras, whether it's a GoPro, a DSLR, or any of that good stuff. So make sure to subscribe, click thumbs up if you like this video, and we hope to see you back here soon on Ditch Auto. Thanks a lot.